how to boost your productivity when using cloud code this is a short video with very impactful tips that have skyrocketed my productivity when it comes to using cloud code and i wanted to share them with you guys let's uh, get going so first of all is a joint scratch pad this is the first tip so obviously uh, when we are using cloud code we have to manage the context now one of the things that i recommend doing is working in parallel with different agents but with a shared context so basically it doesn't mean that you need to generate sub agents in the conversation you can alternatively just create more terminals or more instances of cloud code but you must sh make sure that they have a shared context so this is basically the problem how it looks like cloud code instance number one is i wrote the code cloud code instance number two what code i don't see it because they don't have a shared context alternatively if you only had one cloud code instance so you basically he also writes the code and let's assume that you want to test it as well so he might be biased or not objective so you don't want him to test the code that he wrote so this is why it's very um, favorable to have different instances so what you want to do is you want to have two instances one is writing to the file and the other one is reading the file and we have the scratch pad which can we can call it basically the context or the joint memory that has the task progress the decision made the code review notes the question for next cloud etc so the file is the shared memory and we use a markdown file as a communication channel between cloud sessions so let me give you an example we can open two cloud code instances here let's say that this is the code writing agent and this can be another instance in the same directory which is the review agent So we can generate a scratch pad, create a scratch pad, let's call it YouTube demo and upload and write in the scratch pad your goal, which is to create a to-do list app in the scratch pad file, make sure to list all steps in the atomic level. So this is going to create the scratch pad um, I see that the microphone isn't accurate, but not a big deal because it already understands my intent. And after it creates the file, we will notify this agent, this separated cloud instance, you are a QA tester. Your goal is to analyze the scratch pad and see what did the dev agent did and then analyze the files that he actually wrote after doing so write your reviews in the joint scratch pad and we can also use a uh, at which allows you to reference a specific file. So as soon as this will generate the file over here, we can tag that file. So this is the first tip. Um, I want to move forward, but as I said, having a joint scratch pad, separating, um, separating the roles in different instances. It's just as simple as that, but it's very, very powerful and useful. By the way, this isn't something that I'm making up. I read about this in one of Anthropic's blog posts, and they say that across the board, this yields better results. Um, so as I said, this is like kind of an example workflow. So Terminal 1, build auth API, write progress and decisions to Scratchpad. So this instance is writing to Scratchpad, creating the auth endpoint. In the, term, in the second terminal, read the Scratchpad and review the auth code, add your feedback to the Scratchpad. 
Um, and the pro tip is tell Claude which file to write to and which file to read from. So the QA needs only to read from. Perhaps you can create another file with um, his feedback. It depends on how you want to architect this. The next thing is more like a very uh, simple productivity hack. So instead of um, using the slow way, which basically you can say run the test and Claude will say I'll run the test and then it asks you uh, do you allow the npm test command? You need to say yes, no, or always allow, and it waits for you to click. Alternatively, what you can easily do, what you can easily do, you just add an exclamation mark, and this basically um, creates instant ex execution of bash commands. So, with the prefix, um, basically Claude knows that uh, it's going to immediately run the bash commands, which is. Seems small, but it's very useful and powerful. And uh, the thing is to note is it does take the context of um, the results and the output of the bash command. So it's not as if it, it is being opened in a different terminal and has no idea about what's going on, but it just it doesn't prompt Claude code to start running the, the command in the context. It runs the command um, directly via bash, but it does the output. So a few examples uh, of useful commands. So these are bash commands basically. So exclamation mark git status, exclamation mark git diff, etc, etc. Now the last tip is using custom slash commands. Um, Slash commands live in different places in your project, in uh, the user level, it doesn't really matter, but the main point is you need, you can create slash commands that will boost the productivity um, of your coding and building. Basically, whenever you have something that it kind of repeats itself, I highly recommend that you create a bash command. So for example, uh, a bash command, uh, not a bash command, a slash command could be review so what you just do you come here and you write you enter your cloud instance you do the slash and as soon as you do slash you have obviously all the options that are built in by cloud code so for example context which visualize the current context or status which shows the status the versions that you're using stuff like this so these are all stuff that are built in in cloud code alternatively you can create your own slash commands so for example i very often i want to uh, visualize stuff with ascii so what i did i asked Claude to create create a custom command for me that visualizes whatever I want using ASCII. So basically that's all I did. I asked it to build this command and then it built the command and then whenever I wanted, let me show you an example of this I think it was here, yes, okay. So as you can see here, this is a new conversation. I use the slash command, show me the current structure of the repo. So I started out with a slash ASCII and I said, show me the current structure of the repo. So it showed me the current structure of the repo using the ASCII tree. Then what I did, I used the, now again, the slash command I asked it, help me to generate wireframe based on Rospig. Rospig is uh, my solutions for automating uh, marketing initiatives, automating generation of creatives, and kind of um, making sure that your campaigns are delivering and working well. So basically I wanted it to generate a wireframe based on Rospig. So what it did, it automatically fetched the landing page and it created the ASCII wireframe for Rospig. As you can see here, this is uh, similar to the landing page, but it just translated it to um, 
a very beautiful and comprehensive wireframe. What I can do now is ask this conversation. Let's see what it does. I'm expecting it to take this conversation and visualize the conversation for me. And it is very useful sometimes to visualize stuff because um, some people understand better using um, more like diagrams. So let's see what is the results. As you can see, it uh, notes that it, it, it is allowed to use five different tools for this command. Okay, there we go. This conversation, a visual journey. User, ASCII, show me the current structure of the repo. Claude, find the root. ASCII, help me generate wireframe. This was the wireframe. ASCII, this conversation, you are here. Summary, messages, free user requests, free uh, Claude responses, tool used, bash, read, web fetch, this, which is very meta. And output generated, and that's it. So, very beautiful, very instant. And this is the idea of generating useful cloud commands for you. Let me go back here and summarize. Um, yes, so what we covered, we covered the fact that you can run multiple instances of cloud code with a sh uh, shared memory which allows you to separate, to control context separation. We discussed the fact that you can use exclam exclamation mark in order to run bash commands faster instead of getting, providing the permission, et cetera, et cetera. And last but not least, we discussed the usage and building of custom, com custom commands, including uh, the example that I showed you, which is generating a custom command for writing ASCII diagrams, and then I showed you the example. That's it for today. Um, this stuff is very useful. I hope you will think so as well. If you enjoyed this video, obviously like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, leave your comment below, and until next time, keep on automating.